Okay, we're trying to do this whole thing in one take. We'll see if I'm gonna succeed. Welcome to my channel. My name is Eugenia. I'm an artist, a fashion designer, a jewelry maker. I do a bunch of stuff on my channel, okay? But in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to make this beautiful coral ring. I just finished it. I made it yesterday using soft soldering. So I recorded this video for you because I had to share. And it's so easy to make. So continue watching till the end and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so let's get into this. I'm going to go over a list of supplies for those that are new, just in case. So I'm going to be using coral um, as a, my base, but you can guys use whatever you want. I'm using flux. This is my favorite flux. I'm using a copper base, silver plated ring, a copper conductive tape in two different widths. My very trusty soldering iron with a controlling knob with a temperature adjusting knob. And this is the tip that I'm using for today's video. And I'm using my heat resistant mat to not burn through my table. Also, um, here is a list, uh, like a tool set that I have and the filing tools that I will be filing my ring with and a, a pair of tweezers and also a synthetic brush that actually came with that flux that I just showed you with this one. We're going to be using that synthetic brush to apply the flux. Very important, this is going to be a fan that I'm going to be using to make sure that all the fumes are, you know, not in your face. Uh, and then this mask, the respirator, you have to use a mask. So the rings that I'm using, everyone's been asking, I have them on my Etsy shop. They are basically a silver plated copper base ring. And um, that's what I'm using always as a base because it's easy to adjust and I love them. They don't tarnish at all. Trust me, they do not tarnish. So let's talk about the material that I'm using. So I am showing here that I don't like those holes and I was kind of adamant about covering them up. But I realized it's just another like art art block that I have and I don't didn't mind them after all when I was done with the piece. So sometimes it just goes to show you that you can have some imaginary obstacles. I was literally almost didn't use those coral beads because of those holes. Very stupid, very like how silly of me. Anyway, so I spend most of the time when I'm working on the piece with composition. Because um, first, for like aesthetic reasons, I want the composition to make sure to make sure that the composition is balanced uh, well. That's like number one. And for and the second reason is that I wanted to actually work structurally. Really, I can never say that word. Anyway, um, because you're soldering, you need to make sure that the pieces are budding well against one another. So that's why I spent a lot of time making sure everything is like a perfect composition. Anyway, right now you see me applying copper tape. I'm not touching it with my greasy hands. They're not greasy, but all our hands, you know, our fingers has a little bit of grease and it can ruin your piece in the long run. So make sure you don't touch your, you do not touch your copper tape on the sticky part. Um, here you see that I applied copper tape. I'm using the quarter inch one and here you can, I'm showing you that I cut myself. So I apologize for a bandaid. Um, I'm applying flux and I'm using my favorite solder, which is lead free. Guys, if you're working with jewelry, please, please, please buy lead free solder. Very, very important. Okay, so now you can see that my soldering iron is cranking hot. Like it's hot, it's super hot. It's the hottest setting I have. And I need it because I'm working with kind of larger surfaces and I want to work quick. Lee and I want to make sure that my solder flows nicely and that's why I heat it up to, to the high setting. I'm applying flux using that synthetic brush that came with that kit. Um, I'll link everything down below and you can see that uh, that's what I was going to tell you. I'm kind of being a little bit of a gangster here because I'm holding pieces with my bare hands. You can see but for some reason coral was not getting hot. I don't know why it wasn't getting hot quickly. It was actually a uh, it was totally fine to handle it up until I would get to the other to the other end of the coral and then I would have to switch it up and use my tweezers but if you're new to soldering please don't do this usually most of the materials get hot super quick super quick super fast so I don't recommend you holding it with your hands and here I am being impatient the pieces are still scorching hot but I'm just can't wait to start you know adding all adding them together 
anyway so here's you can see that I uh, this is what I want to talk to you about the little the joint that I'm gonna be um, working with I found the pieces that I want to connect and all I do I just drop two drops of solder like that just to get them secured okay and then I'm going to start adding more solder and you'll see what I'll do in a minute I um, I like this is the face of the piece so I like how elegant and like airy this turned out so then I'm gonna flip the piece as you can see here and I'm gonna fill it up with solder to make it very very secure and why my solder is dropping so easily is because it's at the high setting it's literally like like butter right now you know that's the consistency and to join this whole thing all you have to do is just, is just this kind of like sliding motion that I did and it uh, filled in the gaps and it just worked perfectly and it looked nice from the you know from the front and then also looks nice uh, from the back uh, which no one's gonna see because we're gonna have a ring base attached to it so this is where I realized that I didn't add a copper tape here that I forgot, uh, you know, construction, construction, construction. Anyway, so this is me actually not being patient, not waiting, adding copper tape on a hot uh, coral at this point, but you know, ain't nobody got time to wait. And I just, I just was getting so excited to finish the piece. So I was like, whatever, I'm hurting, but I don't care. But then I came up with that trick guys. And the trick is that if you have that fan, you can place pieces behind the fan to cool. And it actually worked. It was the first time me doing this. I realized that I can do that and it cooled it off pretty quickly. So now I'm attaching uh, copper, I'm sorry, I'm attaching solder to the uh, part that's going to be uh, joined with um, the last part of the, of the ring. So you can see that I'm just covering it and making sure it looks nice. And um, now we're going to be attaching the last part. And again, like I like my composition. You can see that um, it's 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 nice composition wise, but it's also uh, it structurally makes sense. Here's what I realized that um, the way it lays flat on the table, um, I didn't like the way it laid. Like it laid very uh, like unevenly. It, it needed something to lift it up. So you can see that I added a piece of um, paper, you know, sandpaper. But you can add whatever to that. Should just give it a little cushion, you know. Um, so here you see me again using the same technique by dropping a couple uh, drops of solder just to let it connect it, let it be connected. And now those um, the sliding motion that I do to fill in the cavity. And I'm going to drop a few more uh, beads of solder to the back because I am like you know a crazy person like that i want to make sure everything is like super secure and now it's going to be like super secure you won't be able to break this this is very strong joint and this at this point so now it's scorching hot and this is where you would think about orientation how would you want to how would you want it to sit on your hand i thought of that um prior so i know my orientation but here's where basically where you can um orient it vertically or horizontally however way you want it so the trick is when you apply those bases, you do not hold a base and apply a heavy top, uh, you know, heavy decor on top of it, uh, you know, the ring you just created, but you actually lay that part down and you attach a ring base on top, which is much easier gravity, you know, and um, it, it could be pretty finicky to attach it, but um, at some point, it, like uh, over time, you'll be able to do it. So when I'm doing this, I'm very careful about not uh, spreading solder all over my ring base because it's gonna look messy. It's gonna look very DIY. Like I don't like it. Um, so what I'm what I'm what I mean is that I don't want the solder to get inside of my ring. I don't want the solder to be on the band of my ring. I want it to be just where they merge. Right. So this is what I'm doing. And to do um, the best way to do it is basically by placing a little drop and then um, just again, like just one drop to connect two pieces together and then get your iron super hot so you can just you, so you can just drop uh, drops of scorching hot solder that's going to get into all those crannies and cracks and it's going to fill out, fill up the whole surface and it won't ruin your piece. But it's tricky because you can totally get it on the ring itself, but with over time you'll be able to do it. 
here is I'm showing you how to condition the tip of the iron. I'm done soldering. I added a little bit of solder to the tip of the iron and I stored it like that. And this is how the ring turned out. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm gonna talk to you right now in a minute. I'm gonna switch back to uh, not voiceover Eugenia, but I, to be honest with you, I'm very happy the way it turned out. It looked very like Japanese cal calligraphy to me. I don't know, it looks like a sign of fire. I mean, I don't, I don't speak Japanese, I wish, but it reminded me something I don't know, in that manner. And I just love it, love it, love it. I've been wearing it ever ever since. I'm just happy with this result. Never thought that coral would look so cool with silver, but it does. So yeah. If you don't know Rick Owens, check him out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was fun. I personally love the way this turned out. Every time I make a ring, I'm like, it's my next, it's my favorite, but like, this is literally my favorite ring right now. I've been wearing it all the time. Anyway, so I hope I inspired you. Do not procrastinate on your dreams and your desires to learn something new, to experiment, to create. If you don't give yourself that permission, I give you that permission to create, to go after you want, to go after your dreams, because we live in a piece of rock in the middle of nowhere. So experiment, no one's gonna judge. We're here together, okay? Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye. It's a cool shirt that I made a few couple years ago, and I just hand-painted this whole thing, and I then embroidered it because I was crazy back then, and I had probably more patience than I do now. But yeah, anyway, Rick Owens. That's all I wanted to say.